This video is going to apply the guiding principles for technology selection to uh, group work and supporting group work in your remote course. So the guiding principles that we have been advocating for here in this resource are that technologies are institutionally supported, enable asynchronous engagement, that they're accessible and easy to use. So this video is going to take those four principles and apply it to um, some considerations for supporting group work in your course. First, when it comes to institutionally supported tools, we would highly recommend OnQ and Office 365. So in OnQ, there are uh, particular tools that are targeted at um, group work. So a group assignment, group discussions, and group chat. The OnQ support documentation can all show you how um, th these tools can be set up to support um, group activities. For Office 365, uh, Microsoft Teams has quickly become the institutional go-to tool in supporting teamwork. And students can be using Teams um, just as well as staff and faculty could be using Teams in supporting their own um, engagement. So in Teams, students can collaborate, they can share files, have chats, and, and meet synchronously as well. So it's a highly flexible tool and there, um, CCT Plus is supporting that ability to create groups um, or in Teams, to create channels in Teams as connected to your course. When it comes to asynchronous engagement, here are a couple strategies and things we recommend for ways in which group uh, activities and group-based learning um, can be accomplished in an asynchronous manner. So it's Im really important to clarify some expected form of engagement with students. So when they're looking at their group um, assignment, what are your expectations for how they're going to engage with one another? Some of this clarity comes in establishing clear checkpoints and deadlines. One approach in supporting all of this can be um, to have groups um, strike or, or create a group charter, a set of rules um, that they are going to abide by with one another and with you. One recommendation that I have that I've, I've tried and used successfully in the past is to set up your groups based on time zone. So this requires um, polling your students, um, doing a quick survey to ask them what time zone they're in, and um, generally, I, I had asked when students plan to engage in their course activities. Um, noted, noting that I had done this for a group of about um, 25 students, and I took that information uh, and divided students into groups of four or five um, based on time zones so that they were engaging with students that were in their similar time zone. Finally, um, tools that that uh, provide tools, but then, sorry, provide the tools, but encourage autonomy is what this point is really all about. That when it comes to group work, um, students will make decisions for themselves and for their groups as to which tools best support their type of engagement and learning. So um, it's okay if different groups end up using slightly different tools, as long as you've made it clear what tools they need to use in order to communicate with you and to submit any uh, documents and materials related to that assignment. When it comes to accessibility uh, and group work, you'll uh, want to consider tools that do meet the accessibility standards and AODA compliance, um, but other ways in which tools can, can support accessibility in group work is in providing that sort of simple and clear grading structure. structure. Anything where um, you're able to uh, scaffold or um, support wayfinding with students in um, engaging with that. Incorporating flexibility, so where possible, um, flexibility in the assignment, flexibility in the tools that are being used, um, allows students to make choices uh, based on what they're comfortable with and, and um, feel, feel confident in using. Finally, um, sending reminders can be a, a really great practice for accessibility. So reminders of um, upcoming deadlines, of um, certain expectations in terms of where groups ought to be in the process um, can be helpful in just in supporting students get through this activity and, and recognize what is being um, expected of them. Finally, when it comes to ease of use and supporting group work, one of the best things you can really do is communicate regularly with your students to check in with them, offer them encouragement and reassurance. 
The second point here is um, important in that when heading to remote teaching, um, the fewer tools you can use, really the better off you and your students will be. It becomes overwhelming for everyone when um, there are a multitude of technologies being recommended and, and used um, because you'll end up fielding questions about um, maybe more technologies than you're wanting to, to support. And finally, the third point here is really to clarify communication channels. So uh, make it clear to students how they are to connect with you, whether that's through email or um, on cue and the discussion or chat, uh, making that clear from the beginning to say, this is where I'm going to look for messages from you so that um, students know where to direct their energy and attention. And you don't get that communication coming in from a variety of different sources, um, many of which you, you did not want to field. So that's uh, a very quick um, run through of these guiding principles in relation to group um, learning, group work, um, and I hope it gives you some an overall sense as to how technologies can be broadly applied um, to this type of learning and, and teaching.